On the 15th of October 2011, a reported 800 separate protests took place all around the world under a banner called Occupy. In dozens of countries, people took over public spaces, setting up encampments to create a vibrant protest against an entire system of free market capitalism and an undemocratic political system that puts profit before people. The camps were important spaces of debate and discussion and attracted media coverage from all over the world. In London, Josh and Venus lived at Occupy the London Stock Exchange, which sat at the foot of St Paul's Cathedral for more than four months. It was a bunch of people with loads of different ideas that came together on a day, you know, much like, much like loads of other things, which is why it's one of the most recent forms of this long struggle. It's just a name you put on it for a certain time. Fundamentally, we're all striving for something peaceful and, uh, and loving. And loving and equal. Yeah. And that, that is what Occupy is. Let's, let's not yeah. shy away from that, that it is that resisting this feeling of being oppressed and not being able to meet your basic human needs. I guess in 2011, it came from this momentum of these uh, uprisings that were happening all across 2011. And uh, people were feeling that momentum, like even at the camp, you could kind of see people were like, oh, did you see that video of this and that? And it really got me pumped up. And, and following that, people grabbed that momentum and tried to get something to happen in, in London. We were all on one equal level. We lived on the ground. We shared food together. We shared many great conversations together of how we wanted to see the world for the people within it and the people who were to come. There was uh, the front info tent where there was quite often discussions happening. So if you'd come along on a normal day, you might have seen a, a placard at the front that said the times of the discussions that were happening. And some people would come and say, OK, five o'clock, there's a talk by David Harvey happening on the steps. I'd wake up and look out my tent and there'd be like a banker fully kitted out on his way to Goldman Sachs having a raging debate with the, with the occupier about the way that capitalism works and the way it shouldn't work and the way it, it does work and it, it was always vibrant, it was always the, this, these discussions. We had live link-ups between, so we had a big screen where we could see people yeah. in there at different camps in the different parts of the world and a really great sign that we really are working together and we're not in our isolated little pockets. We're really in this together. The space was always supposed to be completely open. When, when people first thought about what we can do with the space, the first idea was like, it's not what, what we can do with the space, but what everybody who can come can do, can do with the space. A, a lot of it was experimentation with how to achieve the most potent form of democracy in that space because it was it was a space of experimentation and also a space of education it was definitely self-organized and it allowed people to have a lot more freedom in what they did and people didn't feel the kind of pressures that you feel in a in a workspace where you're where you're made to do things in a manner that is just not it just doesn't nurture the way we work as humans we like to be autonomous and 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 what and self-determine our own by ourselves the way we work and yeah we had that opportunity for people to do that so I, I'm just really not into marching. I don't feel like you're getting anywhere. They're just often quite like, just going down the street, reiterating things that they don't want, rather than providing solutions and like down with gravity. You know? I think taking a public space has to be noted that Occupy wasn't the first to do that, won't be the last to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's been happening um, since, you know, since the beginning of people finding ways to resist you know, taking a space um, that's quite out there and showing your disapproval in the face of the oppressor. People need a space for something that they're going through. They need, they need to be able to go somewhere with all the stuff that's going on in their head, with the problems that they find in the world. They need, they need, there needs to be a space that you can take that to. If you, if you can't resolve it, within yourself, then you do need to, you need, you need to find somewhere that you'll mm. be heard if you need to speak. We did seem to imprint a lot of what was going on in society into the camp. There was a lot of very male dominant stuff going on, which is what is going on in the world. Is and. And it was really, really hard to break that. The fact that that was going on so much made it difficult for women who weren't used to having a voice 
to have a voice and they fell away and you had to be feisty and strong as a woman to survive there and even feisty strong women were just like you know what forget it because I think fundamentally getting your family in order and getting your foundations you know are essential to any any movement you have a strong foundation and you move from there we wanted a revolution but we didn't have any reference in for how we could work as a group towards that and what Occupy did achieve was it brought people together who wanted to make a difference and who felt that they were on their own. But there was a discussion happening that was being forced onto people's dinner plates kind of thing, you know, it was like, uh, okay, there is this camp here, they do have these things to say, and we kind of brought a discussion there. And we weren't the first to bring it, but we maybe reinvigorated it at a time when it needed to be reinvigorated.